Johnny Two Face here, back with another reaction video. This time I'm reacting to 10 early versions of iconic video game characters you won't believe. This is from What Culture Gaming. I'll leave the link to the original video in the description down below. Please go subscribe to What Culture Gaming and show them all the support you can. So, by the title, this should be an interesting video. So, hopefully, now I've waste, uh, without wasting more of your time, let's get into this and. <laughs> Sometimes a character's look defines them so much that fans mm. will protest against even the smallest cosmetic Oh yeah, that's true. That is so years. true. I should know. I damn near had an aneurysm freaking out at Dante's hair colour back in 2013. <laughs> and that was before we got to the complete overhaul of his entire personality. <laughs> Actually, that game is totally fine and enjoyable now that we've had Devil May Cry 5. But mm. let's carry on. It's fair to say that we get very attached to video game characters more than most other entities. Mainly because we're literally embodying and controlling them, but because games have some of the longest run times across all entertainment. If you're playing an RPG, that's 40 plus hours of your life. Yeah. To say nothing of epic adventures like the rebooted God of War with all of its side missions and extra dialogue scenes, mm. or becoming the hero of Hyrule all over again in Breath of the Wild. Point being, artists and coders need to get a character's design just right. Hmm. And I can't imagine how many conversations are had during those early stages. I can just imagine. The hunches and creative risks what that the actual hell is that? Sometimes a character can undergo tons of changes and overhauls hmm. that we never see. Wow. That the assumption, based on the popularity that comes after, <laughs> is that the final version was the best. Well, maybe <laughs> that's the case for all of the following, but you can let me know what you think down in the comments below. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 early versions of iconic video game characters you won't believe. Number 10, Bioshock's little sisters were chipmunks. There is okay. nothing more unnerving than a I've never played Bioshock. Gone wrong. It's a simple image and one brought across from Hollywood's history of horror, but always an effective direction to go in. For that reason, you have to credit Irrational Games with a bit of restraint. As judging by these early designs, it looks like someone on the team preferred the Little Sisters looking more like strange chipmunks or squirrels. Either way, they're kind of ridiculous. Imagine yeah. Bioshock, but with hulking big daddies mm. defending chipmunks. Having Dr. Yi Sushong more a zoologist than a Dr. Gone Man. I mean, yes, I'm extrapolating here as it would affect more mm. than just the visuals, but thankfully these initial designs mm. were dropped in favor of more conventional looking creepy children. It goes to show that sometimes these simplest images <laughs> can strike the greatest chord with an audience. Mm. Also, at this stage, it's kind of common knowledge that Bioshock 4 is coming and without Ken Levine. So if the all new Secret Studio are looking to pick up some cutting room floor notes and we end up getting Squirrel Sisters, you heard it here first. Yeah. Number nine, Kirby was called Popopo, -po -po, had no charm, and was white. Wow. Now the won't believe of this will hinge on your love of pink Kirby, but Kirby's whole <laughs> design process is fascinatingly accidental. Hmm. His super simplistic design only sticking because Masahiro Sakurai coded a placeholder blob as he worked on levels and mechanics, and then stuck with it in the end anyway. Kirby's name was set to be Popopo -po -po as the game was called Twinkle Popo, -po, which for me is the best name anything's ever had, only for it to be changed to a rounder name for a western audience, landing on on Kirby. Mm. Still, that uber generic design was just that. And when it came to colouring in the circle with a face, a disagreement between Masahiro Sakurai and Shigeru Miyamoto broke out. Wow. By all accounts, Sakurai wanted Kirby. That one's an ad. Sorry. Never saw it come. Right. I wanted Kirby to be pink, whereas <laughs> Miyamoto insisted that the character be yellow. As a kind okay. of compromise, they went with white on Dreamland's box art, depicting wow. Kirby as he is in the game. Almost immediately, <laughs> this underlying genericism kicked in, and Sakurai's wow. love of pink was made front and center. Kirby did kind of just look like a boo with legs, yeah. and it makes you realize how important a leading color can be. Switch mm. Mario's iconic red to green, and you have Luigi, a character immortally damned for donning the wrong set of overalls 30 <laughs> years ago. It's like realizing the original Santa was green before Coca-Cola made him red. It's wow. It's just not as cool. Number 8, God of War's Kratos was a dreadlocked tribal warrior. Kratos okay, is this one is of the me. most recognizable video game characters of all time. Which is hardly surprising considering his mm. instantly memorable simplistic design. Mostly yeah. bald dude with a red stripe. It's the easiest cosplay in history. However, yeah. seeing these early renditions, it's surprising how much the character changed over the course of development. Wow. Evolving from a tribal warrior to a Greek powerhouse, Kratos underwent some pretty extensive alteration. However, wow. this illustration may be the most surprising. Mm. Especially post-2018 soft reboot, as even way before the very 
very first game came out, some artists were depicting Kratos taking care of a small child younger than Atreus. Wow. Also note that whilst God of War was always intended to celebrate Greek mythology, an mm. Easter egg in 2018's God of War to yeah, the Omega symbol. in Japanese Celtic paganistic and other cultural belief systems. Wow. You can check out more of this stuff in my God of War secretly teasers for potential sequels video from 2018, <laughs> but suffice it to say this older version of Kratos would have given the whole franchise yeah. a completely different feel. Hmm. Number seven, Alucard was just a generic vampire. Alucard is a beautiful oh, is that Castlevania? statue of a man, made more so by long flowing white hair and one hell of a gothic mm. fashion sense. It's for this reason that fans of Castlevania Symphony of the yeah, Night were shocked was. to discover the uninspired look of the original version in Castlevania 3. Compared to his appearance in 1997's mm. genre-defining classic, the version of Alucard seen here just lacks the same charm and elegance of his successor. Wow. Considering his bland and unimaginative design, <clears throat> it should be no surprise mm. that he was heavily redesigned when the time came for him to star mm. in his own game. The change, as literally everyone will likely agree, was tremendously positive. Number wow. six, Gordon Freeman was named Ivan the Space Biker. Half-Life okay. Gordon Freeman is one of the most beloved video game heroes of them all, which makes it mm. even more surprising that he initially looked like a homeless dude wearing a green HEV suit. The wow. character model seen here is Ivan the Space Biker, the initial stand-in for Gordon Freeman that Valve <laughs> used while developing Half-Life back in the late 90s. Though he would later become the Freeman, Ivan made it pretty far into development. So okay. far, in fact, that the character file Doctor.MDL can still be found in Half-Life's code. Unsurprisingly, wow. Ivan the Space Biker, who was created by illustrator Chuck Jones, was dropped shortly after mm. initial playtesting. Something about his flat top haircut and long, unkempt beard apparently just put people off. And they preferred okay. the charms of a glasses wearing god in a wicked orange suit. <laughs> Number 5, Lewis and Francis from Left for Dead. Wow. Someone over at Valve must really hate hair, as somehow over the course mm. of development, both Lewis and Francis lost a significant amount of it. Not yep. much is known about this change, apart from the fact wow. that Francis was apparently redesigned to closer resemble the head developer of the game, Mike Booth. Lewis, <laughs> however, appears to have been altered to more resemble Simon Pegg's titular character from Shaun of the Dead. <laughs> Francis, too, developed from a mean-looking biker to an equally mean-looking biker, but with considerably less hair. Come on, wow. Valve, just give us the long hair and the beards, okay? It's cool. Yeah. That's a good point to make. Cool. Number four, Sonic the Hedgehog was Dr. Robotnik. The animal okay. console mascot arms race was one hell of a thing to behold. Bodies strewn left and right as Bubsy and Blinks tried in vain to establish fan bases, <laughs> runaway successes wow. like Gex and Klonoa spawning sequels and cult fandoms. Even Sonic, though he set all of this in motion alongside Mario, wasn't anywhere near the confident peace symbol throwing hog that we know and love. No, he started out with nothing. Hang on, another ad. I love games like this that are just like free to play, you can jump in with your buddies, have some fun. Sorry, let me... Yes, thank you, Dauntless. Anyway. Nothing. Animals ranging from an armadillo to a porcupine to a dog wow. were all sketched up, with another that stuck for a time being a sleepy dude in a nightcap with a pillow. Fans will wow. know that later this became Dr. Robotnik slash Eggman, but <laughs> yep, for a time Sega were going to launch a platformer with this guy leading the charge. Wow. So like the Hedgehog only came after artist Naoto Oshima showed people random sketches of a hedgehog in Central Park. Finding out <laughs> that they preferred the design of a hedgehog <laughs> over a random sleepy man or a dog or anything else. Thanks, random pedestrians, you saved video game history. <laughs> Number three, Conker was a cute innocent squirrel. The foul-mouthed drunkard that we all know and wow. love from Conker's Bad Fur Day wasn't always as bad as he seems. In fact, <laughs> way back in 1997, the character was depicted as nothing more than a playful little squirrel <laughs> who liked to race with his fellow animal friends, Diddy wow. and Banjo. His game was to be called Conker's Quest, and he could be heard merrily yelling woohoo and yippee as he bounded <laughs> around some generic platforming landscapes. It I think I've seen a friend of mine play this. That Rare changed the character completely, mm. transforming him from a kid-friendly mascot into a violent psychopath that loved alcohol and buxom babe plants plant babe. Oh, babe plants okay. plant babes. But why? Well, in one of the best moves in Rare's career, they <laughs> saw how crowded the cutesy platforming space was becoming, mm. were told through early feedback that Conker wasn't doing anything new, and decided to harness those complaints with a renewed passion. Conker's appearance wow. didn't change, but his character completely did. Embodying a done with this individual, dragged through a set of circumstances where all he'd rather do is hit the bottom. And Ooh, that kind of goes to show, that no matter how far age. along in a given situation you are, you should always trust your gut instincts. Number two, Banjo was a minor character. There was a point in development where Banjo himself wasn't even the protagonist wow. of the game that would become Banjo-Kazooie. Back when the <laughs> game was under the working title Project Dream, Rare had planned the story to unfold around the adventures of a young boy. 
Right. Later in development, okay. though, Rare changed this protagonist to a pirate and at one time also a rabbit before finally settling <laughs> on a bear named Banjo. As wow. you can see, Banjo's initial designs were fairly different from his final version. He was initially mm. planned to be a supporting character, but when it was decided that he would be the protagonist, his design was given a lot more depth and importance. They say the mark of a good fictional character is being able to be recognized through a silhouette. And thanks to Nintendo's epic E3 Smash Brothers troll in 2019, <laughs> that became truer than ever using Banjo's final form. Number wow. one, Team Fortress 2's characters were just generic soldiers. Shown here are some okay, yeah, another game I haven't played. Fortress 2 characters, long before Valve had settled on the cartoonish art style that became gaming legend. It started thanks wow. to the first Team Fortress being a Quake mob. And as you can see, these guys were just kind of boring and kind of bland <laughs> to look at. However, because the game was always about class-based warfare and playing to specific strengths, this gameplay focus became the artistic focus too. After various delays and conceptual redesigns, Team Fortress 2 emerged with a Pixarian art style we all immediately fell in love with. Considering wow. the influence and popularity of Team Fortress 2 in comparison to the original, it's <laughs> safe to say the history of hero shooters would be totally different, and something like Overwatch might not have even happened. Almost mm. everything we associate with Team Fortress 2 comes directly from its brilliantly animated characters, cutscenes, and frenetic action and you just have to wonder how differently the game would have been received <laughs> if valve had stuck to that original look mm. and that is my breakdown of all sorts of characters that changed the whole turn between their first and that'll do it this was an interesting video to interest so as i said i'll leave the link to the original video in the description down below please go subscribe to what culture gaming and i've hoped you enjoyed this reaction if you have please like comment and subscribe and I'll upload more videos as soon as possible.